if they if they really feel like that they're that they're doing better, they hear some revelation, paycheck to paycheck. Basically, just a job, paycheck to paycheck. And then maybe they come to a, a good Bible believing church like this one, and they hear teaching on prosperity. And this is the that this is the fact that you can prosper. God wants you to prosper. You can prosper. You need that as a foundation. And then if you if you go to a church or you hear some teaching on personal finance and budgeting, man, you're really cooking with grease. I mean, in the body of Christ, we think we're flying if we just learn how to get out of debt. Now, I have a whole teaching in my book on money mastery on the debt snowball. So I believe in getting out of debt, but this is how we think. And then we think if we get to this le level right here, oh man, financially, we've really done something. That's thinking like a one talent person. That's where you start. Having a revelation of prosperity, getting your finances in order, that's where you start. And then, boy, if we hear teaching on leadership, now we're really cooking with grease. We've got leadership teaching. So we're coming up here, we're coming up let me get a different color. We're coming up the triangle. And the truth is, everything right over here, all of this is primarily, it's giving you to a one talent level. If I could just be more candid, just having something down here, talent wise, it's zero. You gotta get on up the ladder. And you say, boy, what's at the top, Billy? Well then, th this next level that you go to is really what I call, this is where you start cooking. This is where entrepreneurship, learning to build business, right? And learning to invest. When you get up here, you're now you're coming up and you start getting up here in the two, the five talent level. And then when you start learning to take this right here in your giving and what I call kingdom impact and investing, this is where real five talent people reside. They take the wealth they built in here and they learn how to invest it or give it all away. Remember, I'm going to open the treasure chest and I'm going to find the money with my name on it. I'm going to give it or invest it all away. So here it is on the slides. Leadership, entrepreneurship, investing, kingdom building, city and nation transformation. And he, according to the abilities of each man, that's how the talents were awarded. So here you see them. There's the one talent, two talent, five talents. And then I put, I just, just to help you understand where I think the body of Christ is today. Now, I'm getting ready to tell you how in just a second. But to understand where the body of Christ is today, I just kind of wrote some names here. Brother Copeland's the one. Kenneth Copeland that brought prosperity to us. Thank God for his teaching. Just because I have it at the bottom, I'm not saying those things aren't important. I'm saying this is our progression of revelation and then the amount of extra effort that's needing to learn. And then you've got to come up, you have to have, and then Dave Ramsey teaches you how to get out of debt. And then I have uh, John Maxwell teaching on leadership, and then Robert Kiyosaki on entrepreneurship and investing. And then here's Billy Uphart talking about kingdom impact and city and nation transformation. You have to start thinking that way. You can't, you have to come, you have to be willing to move out of here and start coming up here in your thinking so we can start getting on the right track to building wealth the way that God wants us to build wealth. Now, what I want to do here for a second, I'm going to kind of shift with you with this, and I want to talk about the challenge as believers. What's what's our next step? You go, Billy, that's good. I hear what you're saying. What's the next step? What do I do? I, I, I mean, that makes sense to me. Well, I think what happens many times is we, we misunderstand. I call this the law of wealth, and I'm going to talk at least about the law of wisdom in this session in the rest of this time I have left, but if, but if I have time, I may talk about one more law that goes with it. But the law of wisdom, and here's what I want to say to you, is when we start talking about wisdom, is that wisdom is not something that just happens. And, and, and here's where the confusion comes in. Most Christians think, well, if I need wisdom, and this is the beginning of what I, I call wealth building and understanding how to really make a difference and understanding making sense of making money for making a difference. I call it the law of wisdom, and here's why. Because most Christians, when they get started in trying to develop or trying to build wealth or trying to do something in that capacity for the kingdom of God, <clears throat> and they run into a challenge or they run into a problem, they want to run over here in the corner and they want to pray, for example, James chapter 1 and verse 5, say, God, give me wisdom. 
<clears throat> Arlo, go back to First Corinthians chapter. Uh, uh, anyway, First Corinthians, and where it says Christ is made up. I think it's First Corinthians chapter one, verse thirty. Christ is made unto us wisdom. Well, both of those scriptures are accurate, but I want to show you something about how many Christians miss it. Because what's this now? It's not about just can I prosper? Yes, you can. But the, the real issue is is how do I prosper? And how you prosper is learning how to walk in what I call real biblical wisdom. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 24 says, Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family is built, and by understanding. Now, I highlighted the word wisdom. And by understanding, it is established on a sound and good foundation. And by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Now, I read that. That's from the Amplified Bible. And I want you to notice these words. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Now, in the next slide, I put it in a different order. I call it knowledge, understanding, and and wisdom because really this is the order that it comes from uh you know hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says my people <clears throat> excuse me are destroyed for a lack of knowledge and so what we've got to learn how to do is we got to learn to move from ignorance and start learning knowledge i call it how to knowledge learning how to do something getting knowledge on how to do something i remember when i first started investing in real estate many years ago I made a lot of mistakes, but I had to learn, had to go in and start getting specific knowledge how to and let the Holy Spirit lead me in that. But many people today, many Christians today just kind of throw knowledge to the side, run over here to the corner and ask God for wisdom. God, give me wisdom. Now, the, I'm, I'm not saying the Bible doesn't promise you that. I'm saying the real way God wants you to be a steward and what he expects us to do is we learn how to do something in other words we get knowledge my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge in fact let me say it to you this way never let it be said you didn't find out one more time never let it be said you didn't find out i'll give you another nugget money is attracted not pursued money and wealth get attracted to your life by learning to apply the law of wisdom now you still have to go carry out the law of wisdom but money comes to you it's not pursued money's not pursued because the, the love of money is the root of all evil money's not but the love of money is now the reason i say that to you is that is that you and i have to understand that it's important that we have an understanding that we have to get the knowledge i like to say it this way a poor person ought to take a rich person out to dinner buy a six course meal and the poor person should pay for it and keep the rich person talking and take a journal with you in a pen and start writing as they talk and listen to them and ask them questions. I remember one time many years ago, I was actually just right out of my 20s and I wanted to learn some things about speaking. There's a guy that was putting on these huge conferences, not in the church world, but in the secular world. And he was in the Pepsi Center in Denver, Colorado. I had 20,000 people. I invited him to come speak to about 100 people and he came. And I went and picked him up in a limousine. And, uh, and I went to have a really nice, one of the best restaurants in town uh, picked out. And I told the limousine driver, take him around, drive around the whole city. See if you can take at least two hours before we go to dinner. Because I had my journal with him and I was right. I had all this list, list of questions to ask him. And I learned more in that four or five hour meeting I had that night than I have almost in any time about a particular subject. Because you have to go get the knowledge. In fact, let me say it to you this way. I say to John, John, I got a gold mine for you. And John, you can come get all the gold you want. And I say, John, you're going to have to go get yourself a pick and a shovel and to be able to dig the gold. But it's full of gold. Here it is. And John said, looks at me and says, a pick and a shovel? You know how much they want for picks and shovels? In other words, he's missing the point. He's, he's I call it this way, he's stepping over, over dollars and picking up dimes. He's thinking about how much does something cost. You should never ask what it costs. You should always ask, what is it worth? It creates a different mindset for you and how you go and what you do. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10 says, since a dull ax requires great strength, sharpen the blade. That's the value of wisdom. It helps you succeed. 
So as you, remember money's attracted, not pursued. As you move forward in this and you sharpen yourself, right? You learn to get knowledge. You learn to develop what I call specific.